And so the weak and beggarly elements of the world is anything you look to for the purpose of gathering peace and love and joy to yourself that is dependent on the strength you can see in your flesh. I'm going to say that again. The weak and beggarly elements of the world. It's not just talking about performing the works of the law. It's anything that we look to for the purpose of gathering peace and love and joy to ourselves that is dependent on the strength we see in our flesh or the strength we see in the world around us. They're weak and they're beggarly, Paul would come and say. Okay? If you look at the Galatians, the Galatians thought, if they could be circumcised in their flesh, if they could see that their flesh, the foreskin of their flesh had been circumcised, that that would be the strength that could serve them with the life they desired. That's a weak and a beggarly element, thinking that you can find your desire for life satisfied through the strength of what you see in your flesh. It's weak and it's beggarly. Now you might say, why? How come? Why is it weak? Why is it beggarly? Why is touch not, taste not, beggarly? Why is observing days and months and times and and years and things like circumcision of the flesh, why are those things beggarly? Well, the Apostle Paul, he calls those things weak and beggarly because they could never satisfy the flesh's desire for long life. (laughs) The flesh is desiring long life. And if you want to know what long life is, that means the flesh is desiring for it to be glorified and for it to live and never die. That's what the flesh is desiring. It's desiring an incorruptible life. And Paul comes and calls those things weak and beggarly because he says they can't satisfy the flesh with long life. They can't overcome death in the flesh. They can't put the flesh to rest. They can't give the flesh what it's really after. So they're weak, right? They're weak because they can't give the flesh what it wants. You ever thought that you needed something to have life? You ever find that when you got it, it didn't give you the life you thought you could gain? You ever find that happen to you? Well, that means it's weak and it's beggarly. It means it didn't really possess the power to satisfy what you wanted. Otherwise, your desire for life would have been quenched. And so Paul says in Galatians, he says that the only thing that has the strength to satisfy the flesh's desire for life The flesh's desire for peace and love and joy, the only thing that has the strength to satisfy that is the faith that came in Jesus Christ. The only thing that can give us a certainty of life, the only thing that can give us a surety that we're going to see life manifest in us no matter what's going on around us, the only thing that contains the power to give us a certainty that life is coming forth in us is the faith that was revealed in Jesus Christ. That's the only thing that can do it. Paul says. That's why he says, for we, through the Spirit, wait for the certainty of righteousness by faith. That's what he's talking about there. He's talking about that hope in that word. It's certainty. He's saying the certainty of the life we long for. It's not found in the weak and beggarly elements of the world. It's not found in touch not, taste not, handle not. It's not found in the strength you can see in your flesh or the strength you can bring forth through your flesh. It's not found in those things. None of those things can give you a certainty of long life. The only thing that can give you a certainty of peace and love and joy, the only thing that can give you a certainty of long life, the only thing that can promise you death will be overcome in your life and in your flesh is the faith that came in Jesus Christ. Now, how do we know that it, that faith that came in Jesus Christ gives us a certainty? Well, we saw it put to the test on the cross, didn't we? There he is in the midst of all death. There he is needing peace and love and joy. Well, what gave him those things? And did we see that it could do what it said it would do? Well, it did because it brought him out of the grave, put his flesh to rest on the cross. It filled him with the peace and a love and a joy, even while he was nailed to the tree. The psalmist reveals the heart of Jesus in Psalm 23, saying, my cup runneth over, saying, the Lord is my shepherd. I do not lack anything. You prepare a table for me in the midst of this death. And so we see that faith has been proved, right? Glory to God, man. It's been proved. 